Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today I want to kind of give a little update on the 10 E project that has been kind of been working on in the background now for some time. If you remember, we picked up this machine a while back and the electronics on it were a basket case and we decided, or I decided, that we were just going to kind of start from scratch and using some general plans that we were able to find out on the internet, put a DC drive into this thing to power this uh, 10 E lathe. Now, unlike most machines, uh, the 10 E is a little bit different in the way that it works. In most lathes, usually you have a, uh, you know, either a single phase or three phase motor that's running at a co constant RPM and you have gears that you change on the machine uh, or you change belts around or whatever to change your speeds. Uh, with this 10 E, instead of having a alternating current uh, motor, it has a direct current motor that has the ability to change the speed of the motor and the, basically the motor speed is what does your speed control. You have an infinite number of speeds between the minimum and the maximum um, that you can adjust by just turning a dial uh, and that will adjust your speed of your machine. Now, for doing variable speed motors, um, you know, I think there's probably, some people would argue with me, but the DC motors do kind of probably have an advantage over an AC motor, particularly a three-phase motor. Uh, yes, you can put a variable frequency drive on one and, and get good speed control, but you can get a wider range of speed control out of some of these DC motors, and you can also get more torque, particularly at the extremities with a DC motor. And that was the reason why back in the day that they put these DC motors on these uh, lays like this. So I'm not gonna lie, this project has been a challenge from day one. Uh, and thankfully I've had some very good help and a gentleman up in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, viewer of the site, uh, John, we're just gonna call him John. He doesn't want me to share his last name, but uh, he has really, helped me out a lot in this. He's an electronics guru, uh, understands this stuff a lot more than I do. And he basically kind of laid out the controls and everything else that we've got going over here. And since this, it's been several months we've been working on this a little bit at a time. It's not like I've been out here constantly working on this. Uh, you know, maybe an hour or two a week or something. I might, or maybe not even that much, but get out here and, and, and work on some things and try some things. Been a lot of trial and error, a lot of little tweaks and adjustments to the design. But I think that we are finally getting to a point where we've got some things worked out where I can really try this thing out. And again, I'm not gonna lie, it's been a challenge. And a lot of the challenge has been that I'm not an electronics person by any means. I've been kind of having to, I'll be, I'll be on the phone with John. He's trying to talk me through this and he's speaking a different language as far as I'm concerned when he starts talking about a lot of this electronics. It has been a challenge, but we have worked through it. Uh, most recently, uh, we were having issues with the, the DC drive going into a current limit fault, basically where it was drawing more current than what it should have been for the speeds that we were running. Uh, this thing is basically, the motor and stuff is rated for about 10 or 12 amps being kind of the high end. And uh, whenever you get above that, it was basically giving us a fault on the, the drive here, uh, which we can adjust that. That was by design, but it was causing the, the drive to kind of kick out because it was getting above uh, the levels where it should be. Uh, we really scratched our head and banged our, head, banged our heads against the wall trying to figure out what was going on. But most recently, we added a choke into the, um, the, the line going to the motor. And basically what a choke is, is it basically filters out uh, the, the irregularities of that electrical current. And that really seemed to make a big difference in uh, being able to get this machine up to speed. Now... Unlike most simple DC motors that people deal with, usually you're just changing the, the voltage or the current going to the motor, and that is where your variable speed is. And we do that with this one, but there's also a series wind, or excuse me, a field winding in that motor. So we have one certain range of speeds that you can control by controlling just the current going to the motor. And then there's another range of speeds that we can additionally control by adjusting the field current. And yes, that sounds complicated. Uh, by just 
going with straight current, we can get the motor up to about 900 RPMs, and that's kind of the max, but then when we start decreasing the field current, we can actually increase that motor speed. Again, by design, this is the way these motors are designed, and we can actually get the, the lathe running for up to, well, like I said, 900 RPMs would kind of be the max with just the, the uh, regular current, but uh, the armature current, but whenever we get the field current, we start dropping that off, we can get it up over 3,000 RPMs. And basically what was giving us the trouble was when we started decreasing that field current, um, we would get up around 1500 RPMs and things just started going haywire. When we put the choke in, now we seem to have a full range of speeds uh, like I would more expect for us to have with this. So I think we're getting kind of in uh, some things worked out there. Today, what I want to do is I want to do a little bit of testing with this. And I actually want to make some cuts. I want to put a load on this uh, at the lower end of the speed range. We'll be below 900 RPMs, but I want to make sure I'm going to be looking at my current. I've got a clamp on meter here that will give me my, tell me what amperage I'm going to that motor. And I want to make sure that we're staying in the range that we need to be in. It's just a little test that needs to be done. Uh, but I'm hoping that you guys are going to actually get to see the first cuts that I've made on this lathe, other than just spinning it up and running it during doing some of the testing. We're not by any means through with the design work yet. There are some changes I know that are still kind of in the future. Um, and before I get into some testing, I'll just mention a couple of these. We've, uh, we're going to actually, we've got some relays in here to do the forward and reverse. So there's actually a, a reversing motor starter in there to do the forward and the reverse on the motor. Um, We've looked and this drive actually has the ability to do that built into it. So I think we're gonna take that out of the system. Uh, it's working, but we're gonna simplify things and let the, the DC drive take care of that, which is again, what it's designed to do. Uh, and uh, that will, again, simplify things a little bit, maybe eliminate some of the wiring and stuff I've got going on here. And it will also, when I do my other lathe, I've got another lathe that I'm gonna be doing a very similar setup on it will simplify that process and save me a little bit of money. Uh, there's a couple of other little changes that we need to do. One of the things that John has developed or is in the process of developing is he is actually, uh, we've got a board on here now, it's kind of a test board. It's actually got a display on it that tells us the motor speed and tells us the, uh, some of the readings coming off of it. But I wanna have one knob that I can turn that basically controls both the uh, current going to the armature as well as the field current um, in one knob. And so instead of having to turn the speed knob, you know, to get it up to the maximum RPM and then decrease the field pot to get the, to increase the motor again, we've, we've done a bunch of testing, we've done a bunch of measurements of the voltages and the currents at different speeds. And he's actually developed a curve uh, that and he's gonna program that into a board that he's gonna build for me so that I can have one knob to turn and it will basically be like having two knobs that you're manually turning, but we're gonna have the math and stuff and the relationship between them figured out so that it'll just all be in one knob. And that will eventually be tied into, I think it's this knob right here on the lathe, which is the original knob that went to a potentiometer or um, um, it was a big dial in there. It actually, the original one on this lathe actually had uh, two um, potentiometers built into one. So when you were turning one knob, you were actually turning two different relay or two different potentiometers. We're gonna do it electronically uh, through a board uh, to be able to program it exactly how we need to. So that's still coming. That's gonna get incorporated on here. Uh, it'll actually be on the board itself. So. Anyway, we do have some more changes coming, but uh, I really kind of digress. Let's get in here and do some test cuts and make sure that our numbers look like they need to so that we can kind of continue on to the next step on this project. I'm going to get a cutter mounted over here, get a piece of steel in there we can cut, and we're just going to make a kind of, not a super heavy cut, but, you know, a little bit of a heavier cut. I'll probably start with a lighter cut and go into some heavier cuts. Uh, on, again, lower speed range, but just making sure that our currents and things are within spec and where we're, we're expecting them to be. So let's see what we got here. I got a piece of steel chucked up in here, sticking out a little bit long. Hopefully that won't give us too much chatter. Um, I don't even have a chuck or anything to put in here to drill a center, but we'll give this a try. 
Uh, let's see. I've got my speed set on about 700 RPMs. I see actually 677 is what it is according to the speed uh, indicator we got on here. So we've got a little uh, speed sensor that I got a readout over here that I can read right now. And I got my feed set up on, what is that? That's a 1.8 or 1.6 thousandths per revolution. And what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna come in here, touch off. And I'm, I'm gonna start with a real light pass here. I just don't know what it's gonna do. I am getting a little bit of uh, chatter in there. Let me change that insert out. It looks like it might need it. That might solve the problem. Let me try that real quick. Made a couple of changes. We changed the insert out, number one. I also changed my steel out. I got something a little bit larger diameter and shorter in length. Shouldn't give me as much run out. So uh, we're gonna try this again. And I did get a little run out on the set up there, but let's uh, let's try that. I'm just gonna, we'll just take about 20, 30 thousandths off. And let's see what this does. I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get a little bit more than that. I just wanna really get it cleaned up more than anything else right now. Got a little bit of an interrupted cut, but that's all right. And I'm just sitting here looking at my uh, current coming into there. And I mean, I mean, we're hardly even pulling one amp right now. So uh, that's no problem at all. I'm gonna clean that up and then we're gonna make a heavier cut on the next pass. I just wanna get it, this interrupted cut cleaned up, get that run out turned out of it. And then we can, uh, really try this thing out, put a little heavier cut on it. All right. Beautiful. All right. First thing I want to do is I'm going to put an indicator on here. I want to see how my dial reads. I don't know. On some lades, uh, it's a direct read where you're actually, when you dial it in on the dial, you're reading the, the, the difference taken off the diameter. Sometimes it's actually telling you how much you feed in. So for example, if I go from 170 to 180, that's 10 thousandths. Am I actually moving the cutter in 10 thousandths, which would be 20 thousandths off the diameter, or is that 10 thousandths off the diameter? I don't know. So we're gonna check that out. Let me get an indicator and we'll just check it real quick. All right, I checked it and we are measuring the actual true readout off the diameter. So I'm gonna retouch off there and I'm gonna take a, let's just do 50 thousandths. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 thousandths. Let's just try that and see what happens. And let me check my current again. It's hardly reading anything on the amperage. So uh, that looks good. I'll tell you what we're gonna do is I'm gonna come back out. Let's do another 50. That'll be a total of 100 thousandths off the diameter once we get past that first little step. So we're cutting 50 right now and right here at this transition, now we're cutting 100 thousandths off the diameter. Again, no problem at all. i tell you what I wanna do here is I'm gonna increase my feed rate. Right now we're at, uh, was that one and a half thousandths per revolution? And I want to go to, all right, so that should be three thousandths for revolution. So we're basically doubling our, our feed rate. 
me just come back in here. So it's going to be moving a lot faster. And again, putting that load on here is not hardly putting anything extra on the lathe at all. So uh, I'm looking at the current that it's drawing and um, we're still not even drawing a full amp. So uh, this is good. All right, let's... Uh, I'm going to do a hundred, I'm going to add 50 more thousandths on there. And whenever we get down to the other cut, we'll be doing 150 thousandths at three thousandths per revolution. Making a nice chip there. Now we're really hogging some metal off. My amps can go up a little bit, but it's having no problem with this at all. All right, I'm tickled with that. That is a successful test. All right, uh, I'm very happy with the results that we just came up with here. Uh, like I said, the whole purpose of this today was I just wanted to make a fairly heavy cut over here, check my current, make sure that we were staying within the limits that we have. And basically what I'm finding is, is that at least at these lower speeds, which would be the speeds that we're making heavy cuts at, I mean, we're hardly even putting a load on the motor. I, I actually, off camera, I was I made a 200 thousandths cut at 3 thousandths per revolution and uh, it cut it like butter. Uh, and it was generating a lot of heat, but it could cut it with no problem at all. And again, I was looking at my amps over here on this clamp on meter and we were only drawing a, a, an amp or two, really not even two amps. Uh, and we got like 10 or 12 that we can draw. So we are, we are doing great. Um, I need to get back with John. But I think our next step on this, again, is we're going to be simplifying some things. Like I said, take the reversing contactors out of our uh, whole setup here, which is going to eliminate a lot of these wires that I'm running over to the where my contactors are because they're not on this panel. And uh, like I said, all that can be done inside this Parker 514C DC controller that we have on here. There's no need for that. Uh, as we kind of figured out as we were going through the system. So uh, that will kind of simplify some stuff, hopefully, and clean up this uh, this board a little bit, make things a little bit easier. That's my, my hope and plan anyway. Uh, also, a couple other little things. I had ordered a potentiometer that we're going to put in here and actually get wired into, uh, well, it's this one down here. Uh, that's going to actually all get wired into the machine. I need to do some work to get that in there so that we have the one speed control and get that wired into the whole system uh, and a couple of things like that that still need to kind of take place. I found with this that it's, it's, it, you take baby steps. I mean, we started with the design and, you know, we made modifications until we got things working and and you know now we're going to continue making modifications in this case simplifying things and uh adding in a few new features and bringing online a few new this that and the other until we get it to the finish line and uh, it's not something that you just draw it up and everything works perfect the first time some people may be able to do that. We we were not able to do that. You know, like I said, trial and error involved, but we're getting it figured out. And when I say we, uh, a lot of that's John. When John gets it figured out and tells me what to do, uh, if if we're we're working in that direction, but making progress. Uh, really happy to be here. We you know honestly, uh, before we got that choke installed into the system. We kept getting current limits on this this drive. We actually thought that the drive that I had was bad, and I actually picked up another drive that we stuck in here, and we were having the same problems, and we're like, eh, it's probably not the drive, it's probably something else. 
So, uh, which I need a second drive for the other lathe anyway, so that wasn't a big deal. Uh, I'm glad that we were able to figure it out though, so we can actually use that moving forward. But uh, like I said, it's just trial and error, figuring this out and uh, making progress. And hopefully before too long, we'll have this thing uh, buttoned up and have a working lathe. Uh, like I have said before, I do want to clean this machine up and kind of get it repainted. It's not really a rebuild product. I mean, mechanically, this machine, uh, from what I can tell, it appears to be in pretty good shape. And just using it right there, man, I was getting a beautiful finish even at a 200,000th cut. It was giving me a beautiful finish. So I feel pretty good that the lathe itself is mechanically sound. Uh, once we get the drive here all figured out, uh, we'll cosmetically come in here and make it look pretty again and have a, have a nice uh, little tool room lathe that we can use into the shop. Uh, and again, I've got the second 10 E, the older model 10 E, the round dial 10 E. That one I am doing a full rebuild on. Uh, we've already had the bed reground on it. I'm going to replace all the bearings in the headstock. And that will probably end up being my keeper lathe once we get it going. Uh, and I'll probably end up letting this one go at some point in the future once we get that other lathe in here. But right now, this appears to be a, a very sound machine and uh, looks like it's going to be a good one. So we just need to get all this uh, stuff finished, knocked out, and uh, we're getting closer and closer to that point. A lot of talking on this one, I know, guys, but uh, that's kind of where we're at. Like I said, most of what we've done on this, you guys haven't even been seeing. It's been a lot a lot of time um, kind of off camera and on the phone with John and going through tests and measuring currents and measuring voltages and trial and error, trying this, that, and the other, and, and just getting it to work. But we're getting there. And again, a big, huge thank you to John because I wouldn't have been able to do this by myself. Guys, with that, that's going to be a wrap. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are always greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted. And a uh, big, huge thank you all the supporters of the site out there. And support on Patreon, PayPal, etc. Could not do everything we do without your help. And uh, with that, guys, we are going to sign off. And we will catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.